So today I have decided to discuss the 1973 telefilm Genesis 2, the pilot for Gene Roddenberry's attempted successor to Star Trek. Star Trek had been cancelled after its third season and Roddenberry apparently claimed that he would never write for television ever again. Well, the story goes that in 1972, Roddenberry felt rather bored on vacation and wrote the screenplay for Genesis 2 in six weeks. Now, this is not the first attempt by Roddenberry to create a pilot for a second science fiction program. Star Trek fans would be well aware that season 2's assignment, Earth, was a backdoor pilot to a show that was never made, and probably for the best. But what about Genesis 2? Was this project needlessly, cruelly cut before its time? Well, I don't know. This thing is a great fun novelty for the, what, 70 minute runtime, but I can't imagine trying to consume an entire season of this material. I, I can imagine it would be, well, nauseating. What happens in Genesis 2 then? What is the premise? An actor named Alex Cord portrays Dylan Hunt for the test subject of a NASA funded suspended animation experiment being conducted in the Carlsbad Caverns in New Mexico. Aside from a rock slide killing everyone involved not in suspended animation, the experiment is a success and Dylan Hunt finds himself a sleazy 70s man trapped in an asexual future. This is the year 2133. So what can I say about this one? Well, there's a lot of footage of female navels, supposedly because Roddenberry wanted revenge for the amount of bare midriff censoring in the original Star Trek series. <laughs> you sure showed them, Gene. So yeah, the, the show Genesis 2 was rejected in favour of that live-action Planet of the Apes show, which I have never actually seen, although I am a big fan of that original Apes saga. I mean, let's be honest. Roddenberry wasn't exactly a genius of the kind. Hell, many would argue he wasn't even the most consequentially talented Gene who worked on the original Star Trek program. In the, de in the subsequent decades, many people have poked holes in the notion of Roddenberry's vision, especially in its seemingly inconsistent depiction within that 1960s show, certainly by what we might consider modern standards. I love the original Star Trek series, but it is what it is. Hey, a part of me prefers it to the next generation, which is a far less consistent show than its fanbase would have you believe. I tend to think of Deep Space Nine slash Babylon 5 as the finest exponent of Star Trek or Star Trek inspired television, and everything Voyager onwards to be grotesque garbage. I mean, more or less. The point I'm trying to make is, my favourite Star Trek media departed from the notion of Roddenberry's vision and frankly exposed it as a narcissistic marketing gimmick. Anyway, all that is mildly irrelevant. Genesis 2 is pleasurable for what it is. Find some friends, buy some beers, score some drugs, you'll have some fun. The music is horrendous, I will say that, but otherwise this is a quality experience. I mean, if you know what you're getting into as a 21st century audience. Now that out of the way, is it worth viewing the arguably more well-known sequel slash remake to Genesis 2, this being 1974's similarly unsuccessful pilot, Planet Earth? I'd suggest avoiding Planet Earth if one seeks to replicate the silly distraction of Genesis 2. Planet Earth is essentially a 70 minute tacky diatribe on what would happen if a future society rose which is defined by, as Dylan Hunt describes, women's lib gone mad. It is tasteless and dumb, and I'm not trying to be a virtue signalling insect when I say that. You might recall, but probably not. A somewhat infamous Dragnet episode, which functions as an anti-counterculture diatribe as Joe Friday and Bill Gannon berate an obvious Timothy Leary stand-in about excessive drug use amongst the youth. It seems so creatively counterintuitive to have spent a program's entire runtime banally discussing the issues of the day, but also commercially counterintuitive, if I may play devil's advocate. Just to be clear, my opinion on these actual issues is nuanced and mostly uncontroversial. To a large extent, 70s women's liberation got something of an unfair rap in its time. Seriously. And something about a culture of alcoholics and chain smokers scolding the counterculture about cannabis and psychedelics is fairly laughable. That being said, Timothy Leary was a plant associated with Co-Intel Pro. That also being said, trip away my friends. So yes, Planet Earth is a very playful and non-serious seemingly take on the women's liberation phenomena of its day, and fails to say anything interesting regarding it. Not that we should have expected it to. I would recommend spending time with Genesis 2 for the inane reasons I gave, but I'd suggest avoiding Planet Earth unless you really otherwise insist. They replace Alex Cord with the more interesting male lead of John Saxon, 
An uncle of mine once claimed to me that anything of John Saxon is good, which is quite sadly plainly false. But they don't give John Saxon anything interesting to do after the first three minutes. As the film begins, he destroys a military vehicle of some kind. But the picture peaks here. Roddenberry helmed two other sci-fi television pilots during the 1970s, The Questor Tapes in 1974 and Spectre in 1977, neither of which I have seen yet. Obviously, Star Trek Phase Two was considered, though it was dropped in favour of the motion picture, for better or for worse. Considering we, through delayed gratification, eventually received The Wrath of Khan and The Search for Spock, I'd say, for the better. I have read that elements of Genesis 2 and Planet Earth were incorporated into a science fiction program called Andromeda, which apparently aired from 2000 to 2005, right down to the naming of the protagonist with the memorable title Dylan Hunt. I've never seen Andromeda, barely ever heard of it to be honest. I have often seen 1970s sci-fi, you know, pre-Star Wars of the THX or Logan's Run variety, mocked in subsequent decades by television sitcoms, we've all seen and enjoyed Red Dwarf I will assume, and sketch shows. Think Mr. Show Streak Dome 97. And you know what, for very good reason. It's an absurdly dated riot. Who doesn't love seeing a vision of the future that teaches us far more about the revolting 1970s than anything else? Probably lots of people, actually. But me? <laughs> I definitely dig it. Oh, this is a far longer write-up than Genesis 2 probably deserves. But there you have it.